persuasive copywriting. Last night, I was so frustrated because upon exporting in Canva, the entire presentation didn't show up. And actually, um, I had my face recorded for 30 minutes, but no slides. So I was so frustrated and I had to record this again. Today, we're going to launch the copywriting playlist of Y Loop. And the first and introductory module for this discussion is going to be about persuasive copywriting 101. So first question, why 101? We're going to dive deep into the basics. What are some of the copywriting hacks that great copywriters do? But also, I want to put a disclaimer. We're not going to be able to exhaustively tackle everything because that's a lot. I don't want to stress myself. I'm only going to give you guys like a couple of tips so that it's, it could give you a jump start into this copywriting position or, or role that is being offered in a lot of um, gigs. And it could also jumpstart your copywriting career, like whatever it is that you would like to, you know, do. Like for example, social media manager, copywriter, email marketer, all of you, all of these things, all of these roles actually need a good copywriting skills. So let's jump in. What we're going to do is we're going to talk about some of the tips first, some of the hacks. Then we're going to talk about some tools to actually speed up your copywriting. And then lastly, we're going to talk about some people that are worth emulating, worth following in the copywriting space in terms of how they built their online brand and worth following in terms of their pieces of advice and writing. So why don't we go ahead? Let's tackle one by one some of these pieces of advice. The first advice, use social proof. So when we talk about social proof, we're talking about using elements or evidences where we can actually parallel the example of how other people experienced your product or service, a certain product or service, and then integ integrate that into the copy. So we're talking about testimonials, social media shares, social media mentions, endorsements, case studies that show how your product or service has helped others. Social proof is like giving a nod on a certain product, but instead using an actual human, an inf a person with a certain influence on a certain niche to actually uh, give a nod on a certain product and then integrate that particular approval into the copy. So that's social proof. It's like a validation, right? It's a good methodology, especially when you work with a lot of influencers um, or when there is someone relatable. And the kind of product that is being advertised is very specific to a certain group of people. And then someone influential, someone with credibility talks about it. And then you generate the copy, integrating the testimonial into that particular copy. That's what social proof, social validation is all about. And it's effective. Number two, let's talk about benefits over features. So when we talk about features, Largely, we're talking about the physical description of the product or the service and what does it entail? What are the things that make your product or service unique? See, so for example, I'm going to say that this computer, this is like 13 inch MacBook Pro has these particular specs, for example, the storage is this. So I'm talking about the features, right? But when I talk about benefits, benefits is all about explaining the value or the benefit of that particular thing to you, to the user, to the person that I'm trying to sell this product to, which means to say that in this particular strategy of benefits over features, your copy about benefits should help potential customers answer questions like why or how. For example, in the kind of example I used earlier, which is computer, my laptop computer, I should be talking about in my copy how having a laptop can allow me to work anywhere, anytime with flexibility, right? So if someone is going to sell a laptop to me over a desktop computer, that should exactly be how the framing is because I'm nomadic and I love flexibility. So this is a perfect equipment for me. 
By explaining the benefits and how each benefit affects your customers, you're essentially educating and persuading your customer at the same time. The third tip. Third tip is about creating urgency and scarcity. When you talk about urgency, we are talking about limited time offers, opportunities and benefits, discounts. For example, in the Philippines, we're talking about peso fares on Cebu Pacific or 11-11, Black Friday sale. You know, all of those kind of offerings have to be highlighted in a certain way. And the copy plays a very crucial role in that. So when you try to create this sense of urgency and sense of scarcity, you're also creating a sense of FOMO or fear of missing out to customers, which encourages them to take an immediate action. And of course, that's exactly what you want, which is exactly why you wrote a copy in the first place. Number four, know your audience. I think this is cliche already, but I think when you do have a radical understanding of your customers, you can write a better copy. It doesn't really make sense if you're trying to get customers that are moms and Filipinos at that. And let's just say not tech savvy and also in a lower middle class segment of the population. And yet your copy is very highfalutin, technical, academic, and super conio, right? Or straight English. So you wouldn't want to write your copy that way. Otherwise, clearly there is a detachment of the messaging and the audience that are supposed to receive the message. Number five, tell stories. Everyone has got a story to tell, whether it is the janitor, whether it is the teacher, whether it is that random stranger that you met in the hallways of the shopping mall, whether it is the security guard, whatever it is, every single day and every single person that you meet has a story to tell. How do we relate that to the product? When you try to write a copy, you have to be able to tell a certain story. Say, for example, I'm writing a copy for a long-form article about Mother's Day. And at the end of that particular long-form article, I'm going to encourage all the women, um, young moms, for example, to take a day off and treat themselves with... Uh, Hamper day by buying or shopping at Zalora because they deserve it. The copy that I'm going to write will obviously have bearing to tell. Like, why is it that self confidence is tied, uh, for moms spe uh, specifically, is tied to the mission of Zalora? So I think that trying to make a cohesive story, but at the same time, doesn't really misalign with the digital branding of the company that is very strategic so yes feel free to create stories feel free to integrate that into the copy as long as they're authentic okay they have to be real stories you can solicit these kinds of stories from your actual customers but make sure they're correct make sure they're authentic make sure they're aligned with a brand that is not just being done in a you know in a very transactional way to get the reaction from the audience. Number six, and this is one of my favorites, create an illusion of choice. So first strategy is have some choice, which is when you create a free choice in which only one option is truly offered. Sorry for the typo in there. AKA, take it or leave it. The second is Morton's fork, which is you create a situation where there are three choices but one is your ideal outcome, and two are equally unpleasant. So options is one, two options, but they all lead to the same unpleasant situation. So really, in reality, there is only one option. I think um, a good example of this would be, um, you know, when, when you create a, a copy where, like, like this, like take it or leave it, or like, um, it's all or nothing. Like those kinds of copies, they, they create an illusion of choice where 
it's as if there is a choice, but really there's not. I hope I have shown some examples here, but we'll be able to do that as we tackle, as we go through the, uh, the entire course in depth. Number seven, follow a logical and emotional structure. There are a lot of frameworks around this, but the commonsensical approach to saying is, or to explaining this is that it's much more easier to absorb a certain story, a certain message when there's a logical flow, an emotional structure behind it. Say, for example, the IDA framework, which is attention, interest, desire, and action. It moves through the funnel. You try to gain the interest, for the attention first of the leaders. Then you want to move them a little deeper into the interest. Then you get their desire, which is when eventually they're going to take an action. The second thing is the past framework, which is the problem agitate solve. One of the ways in which copywriters would tackle this framework would be they introduce a certain problem. Let's say, for example, they ask the question in social media, do you want to keep paying high mortgage fees? Or let's say, for example, do you always want to get stuck with paying car insurance every single year? Then they try to double down on the agitate level, which is when you try to create an anxiety, a situation where anxiety arises because you explain what the problem, what the fuss is all about. And then you introduce the brand by solving the pain point that the customers have, which is in accordance to the problem that you presented in the first place. So that's the past framework. The last is something we already discussed, which is the benefits over features framework. So you have to have a logical and emotional structure um, in your copies so that it's easier to read and there's emotional connection with the reader. So let's take a quick example, a quick look into the example we have here. We have here an example that was written vertically from top to bottom and you have to do this huh? like when you try to write a copy know that people are going to read from top to the bottom not from the left to the right meaning to say you have to assist you have to facilitate the readers another thing do not try to cramp your long thoughts into one single paragraph Try to break them into different paragraphs. One sentence paragraphs are enough as long as you're able to tell the story well. And then if you notice at the end, aside from this being spoken, being written in Tagalog, which means, sorry, it was in English, but there are some words that are in Tagalog. Are there? Sorry, I'm kind of confused. Maybe not. <laughs> Okay, I think that's the other example. Oh yeah, the first, the first two sentences. Anyway, at the end of this copy, it says, we want you. So it's basically driving a certain, or asking a certain action at the end, which leads me to my last point, to write a strong call, call to action. At the end of the day, there's a reason why you're writing a copy. And that reason is to actually encourage the, use, the readers to take an action at the end of the copy, at the end of reading that particular copy. So whatever it is, maybe an email, maybe a blog, maybe a newsletter, a white paper, you would want them to do something at the end. So that's a call to action. Otherwise, you're just writing for performances, for performative reasons. And that's not what we want because a copy is supposed to actually have a certain action at the end. Otherwise, it's just going to be long-form content, like an essay, right? Or a novel, I don't know. So a clear call to action would be um, putting in words such as buy now, sign up now, download, share, or bookmark this, 
like all of these things in relation to a play up with the uh, other elements in the channel that you chose something like the buttons the colors of the buttons for example where you put this call to actions the contrasts the incentives as well like all of these have to form a certain puzzle which is exactly why you do have a campaign idea um, a big idea for a campaign and then exactly how you're going to roll them out into different media formats and what have you. So as mentioned earlier, the call to action has to be present at the end, or sometimes for some copywriters, they put the CTA at the beginning. But if you take a look at this example, there is number one at the introduction, sort of like a hyper message, message which is like, trying to get the interest of the readers we're training 150 plus people so using numbers as well and then play up on emojis then a bullet list so here's a sneak peek on what you learn and in the end you actually uh, ask them to comment so you can uh, so the author can send a message to the people who actually commented and he can actually send the uh, invitation to the book or the training that he is trying to offer. So those are some of the tips. Now, what about the tools? Some of the tools that we're using for copy generation, number one, copy.ai. So copy.ai is very popular among freelancers, marketers, business owners, and this includes creation of quality content simply by using prompts. You instruct it on the, basically the system of what you want to achieve, and then it's going to create sample copies for you. So it's very easy and it's also very straightforward. It looks like this. For example, you're trying to create product descriptions for e-commerce products. So you're going to instruct the system, the, the bot, like, what, uh, what is the product called, description of the product. This, uh, you can choose the tone, like friendly, business formal, academic, and then it's going to give you sample descriptions. So it really makes your job super easy. As for the pricing, this is the monthly pricing, $19 per month. Annually, it's going to be $14 per month. I would actually choose the monthly, especially for the first few months uh, when I'm, you know, trying to create content. However, as copywriters, we have to also be very careful about um, how we use this AI technologies. The second is Grammarly, and this is one of my favorite tools because it's integrated into, it's built in to the desktop browser, so technically it can crawl across various tools like notes or emails, and it can give you a better version of whatever it is that you're writing. This is very helpful, especially for ESL speakers like us. So you just have to add it as an extension, and then um, it's going to give you a better approach into clarity, into punctuation, for example, if there are any uh, issues with it engagement, delivery, and what so have you. As for the pricing, it's cheaper compared to copy.ai. I actually have this premium uh, version per month and it's been serving me well. Then we have SpyFu competitor analysis. I don't wanna focus on this one because it's very, very digital marketing focused. However, for some, digital marketers, especially for project managers, using SpyFu is very helpful because it allows you to scan the keywords uh, of your competitors, the keywords that you're using on your website, and it actually allows you to strategize better in terms of copies because we all know what we all know how SEO is done, right? Like search engine optimization, it's all about keyword. Um, and what kind of keywords are we targeting? And how do we actually 
make sure that those keywords are ranking well in search engines or SERP, right? So the page results. So SpyFu is very helpful because it allows you to integrate the strategic keywords in the, into the copy that you're creating. And then we have share through headline analyzer. This is very helpful for email marketers. So obviously as the name suggests, it analyzes the headline, comes up with a score on how strong your headline is, and then comes up with suggestions as well on what are the alternative headlines that you can come up with so, or you can use to have a better engagement. Who are some of the copywriters that we should follow? I listed some. One, Alan Ngo, digitalsolopreneur.com. He's good. Another favorite locally, Raf Marabut, Sensei Raf. He's the owner, the expert of Copywriting Dojo. We have Arman Azadi, so you can check out his website. And also we have Ray Edwards rayedwards.com. These are some amazing people in the copywriting industry and they're definitely worth following. Thank you so much for listening to the introductory module for copywriting and 